This is the 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with your host, Vicki Davis. Hello, this is Vicki Davis. Today I'm talking about six apps for digital note taking. In this show, I will cover digital note taking, notes on selecting your own system. I'll cover six different software programs I have used, including Evernote, Notion, OneNote, LogSeek, Apple Notes, and Google Keep, and creating a workflow that works for you. Note that I do release these on YouTube and I will have some screenshots, although this will be perfectly fine to listen to as an audio podcast. You can just go to the Cool Cat Teacher channel on YouTube. So first of all, let's talk about selecting your software. First of all, growth is a decision requiring action. That's why I do innovate like a turtle and twice a week, I learn new things for 15 minutes. And anytime I'm learning something new, I am taking those notes and putting them into my digital notebook. So even if I take notes on paper, I will snap a picture and put it into my digital notebook so that I have it. I do use Evernote, but I have tested all of these tools. Remember, simple is better. It needs to be accessible to you on your computer, on your phone, on any device you use. And if you take net regular notes on paper, you need to be able to pull those in and hopefully search those as well, particularly if you are a professional and you do end up taking a lot of notes like I do. Remember that consistent systems save time. So many of us spend time looking for things, but you need to invest in a workflow that works for you. No guilt. You don't have to jump around to a bunch of different tools. If a paper notebook works for you, use it and be unapologetic about it. I do think that digital notes do help us because we can have them in our pocket available 24 seven when we have our smartphone with us. I prefer having a digital backup, even if I take notes on paper. So let's start talking with Evernote. Now, Evernote is like, people love it, people hate it. I've been using it for a long time. Every time I try to leave it, I end up back. Um, in January, 2023, it was acquired by a company called Bending Spoons, a very reputable software company out of Europe. They have over a hundred million users on all their apps. So they did just release in a January 2024, a new interface. They fixed search. It is reliable and it's a pretty interface. Now they did double their price. You can now collaboratively edit. So I can take a picture on my phone and be editing that document in um, Evernote. One note about it though, is I can record audio, but it doesn't do audio to AI transcription. Now they have promised uh, razor sharp um, AI features coming soon. So I'm hoping that they will be able to um, take the voice notes and then do a transcription. But for now, I typically will uh, transcribe those voice notes before I pull them into Evernote um, so that I don't kind of like lose what's in there but it'll be interesting to see what happens. Evernote does support tasks. Personally, I do all my tasks in Todoist because it's so easy to lose access to where those tasks are. But the powerful thing is those tasks can be linked directly to a note. Now, I have the Evernote Pro version, so I actually generate a link to the note and put it in my Todoist so that I can reopen that Evernote uh, immediately. I also put it on my meeting to-dos and such. Um, Document and image search is available on the free plan as well as the pro plan. Um, you can also use services like IFTTT, if this, then that, and uh, Zapier to send things to Evernote. So I have it send a copy of every blog post to an Evernote note automatically and archive a lot of my digital uh, world. Digital rot happens to us all and then we lose things and I don't want to lose those things and I want to be able to reference and search those inside Evernote. There's a tiny little bit of AI now in Evernote um, to tidy up your notes, which doesn't really work great if you have long notes. But again, they're promising, quote, razor sharp AI. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. They did add 14 new features to the free plan. However, now you have 50 notes that you can have in your Evernote and you can um, use a lot of the features like email to Evernote and you can search to text, which means you can take a picture of like all your bookcases and then search for where that book is in your Evernote notes. Like that's an example of the kind of stuff you can do with knowing where things are. If you have a lot of books like I do, uh, that's a very useful feature 
Also, if you label things and put things in closets and such, you can even find things that way. So it does do visual search and you do have access to that in the 50. So I would suggest if you think, if you're thinking about it, um, set it up, do those 50 notes and also check out my friend Frank Buck's YouTube channel. He has a lot of information on the revamped Evernote and I do plan to have him on a future show for you. Next, let's talk about Notion. Now, the one I stayed with the longest besides Evernote was Notion. Um, with my students, this is my replacement for Wikispaces. So anytime that we are creating collaborative websites, I always take my students into Notion. I have a lot of students who are using Notion now just on their own. It is a very wiki-like environment, but very powerful, very customizable. And it does have some third-party integrations for that voice memos situation I talked about with Evernote. And it has some very pretty far powerful AI tools. In fact, AI is built right in. So if a student has access to Notion, they can use generative AI right there. And But this is the capability with everything. I mean, it's in Google Docs, in the consumer version. Uh, it's everywhere. So the positives of Notion, it's very easy to set up. It's flexible. There's tons of templates, a lot of support community, lots of YouTube videos about how to use Notion. And it has a lot of different systems with templates for Notion. So pick your workflow, pick your system, and there's a lot of templates. My issues with it were two things. First of all, everything I pulled in from Evernote could not be searched. So the search was really broken. And the way it's set up is it's really easy to end up with like an island of data over here and an island of data over here, and they don't really connect very well. So that was a problem with me because I don't want to think about it. I just want to be able to throw it in my notebook and find it. The other thing is, is that I was losing tasks because of that same thing. I might have tasks over here and tasks over there. So while it's very powerful and very customizable, if you don't understand about databases and don't keep everything in one type of database, then it's really easy to end up with stuff kind of everywhere. Um, so for super sophisticated folks, it might be a problem. But if a student has a simple notebook, they actually love it. It's great for keeping book lists and there's all kinds of features with Notion. So you might want to check it out. It does integrate with Google Drive so you can share your notes with others. And here's another cool feature. It integrates really well with websites and embedding. So it would be really easy to create a class website um, with the tools in it or an FAQ or tech support. If I was supporting um, a big school and I had to have a ton of things and I didn't have specific software for it, Notion might be something I would look at for that. Um, now let's talk about Microsoft OneNote. So this is my recommended note taking system for students and for teachers through Microsoft Classroom. So you can easily give handouts to students. They can hand work back. So um, when I want to have like a class notebook and then I want to have everybody have their own notebooks and I want to be able to supervise and see how they're taking notes. OneNote's pretty much the only way to go for that inside Microsoft Classroom. It's not quite as wiki-like as Notion. Think more student notebooks. So they have subjects. Now you can type anywhere on the page, which is really awesome. And the other ones don't really do that. It's easy to capture video, audio, and I can have it open on my iPad and take notes by hand, as well as open on my computer. Um, and pull in PowerPoint notes that I can take notes besides. So um, it's super, super flexible, great for college kids. And in fact, I had a student who's now a doctor come back to me. I taught her in 10th grade. She started using OneNote then, and she said the best thing I ever taught her was digital note taking in OneNote because when she got into med school and even in college, um, she um, had a lot of notes. And so she was able to pull those PowerPoint notes in and take notes beside them. So he ended up uh, graduating with highest honors. So Microsoft OneNote is definitely worth checking out. And whole schools have done um, uh, OneNote implementations and it's very, very powerful through Microsoft Classroom. Now, if you're worried about, you know, what if apps go away, there is an open source alternative. There's actually two. One that I've tested and I'm going to talk about is called LogSeq, but it's spelled L-O-G-S-E-Q, but pronounced LogSeq. Okay, Seq stands for sequence. So that's why we pronounce it that way. 
So it's open source. And basically what it does is it creates a bunch of text files so that you don't ever lose anything. And privacy is first. So it lets you manage tasks, knowledge, and it is a very powerful tool. It works on Mac OS, Windows, Linux, iOS, Android. It works on everything. It has flashcards that will tutor you in all kinds of things. Like it would import my Readwise. And so if you like to, to write in Markdown, you don't want to lose anything. It is a great system. It is open source and supported by a really cool community, kind of like the power note taking open source tool Obsidian. Um, and you can take it anywhere with you. So you can sync with iOS, although sometimes it's clunky to set up. And so then there's also Google Keep and Apple Notes. I do teach Google Keep if students are doing research. But Google kind of comes and goes with apps and I don't want to lose anything. I lost a bunch of stuff from Google Notebook and I just didn't want to do that again, which is why basically I went from Google Notebook um, and then was really back to Evernote. Um, As I have been working on this um, podcast, Google has released something called Notebook LM that I do need to mention. Now they call it, quote, a notebook but I don't know that I would really consider it a notebook. It's almost more like a custom GPT that looks like a notebook where I can preload PDFs, ask it questions, uh, and save notes. Um, so I don't really know that I classify Google Notebook LM as a notebook, although Tiago Forte, um, who I've already mentioned in this um show it really highly recommends and says it's the future of notebooks but honestly while AI is part of notebooks I'm not sure that I'm seeing it yet um the other thing with Apple Notes and Google Keep is it's really I found hard to search it's just not as powerful as the other tools so while it might be nice you know right now on my monitor I have a like a note on Apple Notes that's just kind of like a post-it note a sticky so I use that but the Apple Notes and the Google Keep um, in my experience, aren't the greatest. Now that said, be simple, use a workflow that works for you. And I know people who have a great workflow with Apple Notes. So I would suggest finding a YouTube video, finding somebody who uses Apple Notes or Google Keep if you really want to do those systems. Um, and so the last thing I want to talk about is your habits for notes. So you want to have a capture habit. Now, everywhere, um, all my file folders, I have an at inbox. So that's where I put stuff I don't have time to file. But my goal is to file as quickly as possible. Again, read Tiago Forte's Building a Second Brain. He has a system he calls Para, but I've adapted it to be PATH projects, areas of work, topics of interest, and history. And whether I'm in my Google Drive on my Mac folder system, OneDrive, Todoist, Evernote, I have an inbox where I put things that I may process later. This line should line up with your other system. So I use the same folder structure everywhere. And the way I file is by where I'm going to use it. So for example, when I clip something cool about AI that I'm going to put in my newsletter, I put it in my newsletter folder when I finish using it and I think I might want to write a blog post. I put it in my 80 days of AI. Now using tags in Evernote, I can always find it under the tag, but I try to file it by where I will use it next. That is a game changer for me. Digital notes are important and choosing a system that works for you, that is simple, that works with your workflow can really help you be a lot more productive and save a lot of time as well as your students. Note taking is something we should teach and pretty much all of these systems have Cornell built into them, but soon we will be seeing some generative AI summarization even when we do. The process of taking notes is very important. And I do want to emphasize something with math and science. I've seen some research that talks about how we need to basically be taking notes using our hands and handwriting for math and science because we retain it better. So if so, can they take a picture and put it into their notebook system? So do what is appropriate based upon the research and your experience as a teacher. Remember, teaching is a form of art and a work of art. So you want to do what works for your students and help them develop a note-taking system of their own. Thanks for listening. 
You've been listening to the 10 Minute Teacher Podcast. If you want more content from Vicki Davis, you can find her on Facebook, X.com, TikTok, Threads, Instagram, Blue Sky, and YouTube at Cool Cat Teacher. Thank you for listening.